we find out the limitations of a stock four-wheel drive Jeep as we head out to the Eaton Proving Ground and show you how to get more power to the ground today on Truck U. So Bruno, here's the deal. I have a mission, right? And I'm bringing you in on this because my selection pool is shallow. Well, so. I appreciate the confidence you put in me. <laughs> the mission is we need to take this Jeep and make it a little bit more off-road worthy. Now we've got a good head start on it because it's already four wheel drive, but nothing else has been done. So we need to take it up to the next level, right? I know just the place where to take it. This is not my Jeep. Where are you going? Nor is it mine. That's what's going to make it fun. Oh no, Bruno's got the key. This is not good. Listen, be careful with this Trust. thing. Just be Trust. careful with, take it easy. Don't break it. Got to erase the tracks. Careful. Hey, welcome to Marshall, Michigan. This is the home of the Eaton Proving Grounds. Now this 700 acre facility is where Eaton abuses and beats on and proves and perfects all of its OE and aftermarket parts. So if you've got, well, let's say a Chevy or GM truck or car, it's probably got Eaton parts that are perfected right here. And that same rigorous testing goes right into the aftermarket as well. Now on this facility are a number of cool courses and features as they call them. One being a 1.6 mile oval for all things class A semi trucks, which is pretty cool. For us, it's gonna be about testing the four-wheel capabilities of this Jeep. And there's a couple courses set out for us specifically to do that. So in order to test this Jeep, I need to catch up with Jeff Saxon, the senior engineer here at Eaton, and he can kind of give us the 10 cent tour. Hey Jeff, how's it going, man? Well, hey Bruno. Welcome to Eaton Proving Ground. Good yeah, to man, see you. It's ya. cool to be up here. This seems like an awesome facility. And, you know, like I said over the phone, I brought up that Jeep. You know, it's standard four-wheel drive, but I figure what better place to test the the limits, so to speak, of that four-wheel drive system. Got any ideas for us where we can do with this thing? Boy, I think so. Uh, I think you came to the right place. After we get done with that Jeep, you'll be amazed at what it can do. But first, I think we probably ought to check out how it performs stock. We've got a few few features that I think are gonna, gonna show that real well. All right, come on, let's go out ahead of it. All right, sounds good. <laughs> Now this is our first obstacle of the day and we've got a 20% incline here, which to be honest, doesn't look too intimidating. Now I know we've got a set of rollers to simulate, you know, traction issues, but all in all, this Jeep should pretty much handle this. So what are we trying to simulate by this specific obstacle? Well, a feature like this is uh, equivalent of maybe uh, an algae covered or mud covered boat ramp. You've got a little bit of uh, a grade to get up and a loss of traction under one or one or two tires. So not too extreme conditions for the real world, but some I would think that this would be able to handle. So let's give it a shot. Let's do it. Okay, so we're in four wheel drive, got it in drive. Now the protocol here is to pull up onto the rollers, come to a dead stop. This way we're gonna kill the inertia and then let it go, right? Exactly. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> That's not quite going the way we wanted to. Just a good example that four wheel drive, while a tremendous uh, addition to the vehicle, isn't necessarily everything. Well, I really can't believe this. I mean, I would, you would think you'd walk right up this thing. I mean. That's right. <laughs> and, and, and your brand new $40,000 bass boat's rolling back into the lake right oh, now. Oh man. All right, so this is, this is trouble. So I'm gonna get off of here. And uh, man, I have some serious issues now because this is probably gonna be one of the easier obstacles and we didn't even come close to conquering it. That's right. So right now we're approaching our next obstacle. Now this is the twist ditch. And what we've gotta do is you said, make sure we come in at a 45 degree angle. That's right, and that's just to get our approach and departure angle so we're not tearing our bumpers off. Yeah, that wouldn't be good because this isn't my Jeep. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now this is four-wheel drive, but it's it's not working. What what's, what do we talk about when we say four-wheel drive? Well, and that's something that's a, a common misunderstanding, is that even though you've got power being delivered to both axles of the vehicle, in reality, because of a problem with the differentials, 
typically only one wheel is receiving the power coming from the engine. And we're seeing exactly that here because as the vehicle is centered across this V-shaped cross section, we've got one wheel on the front axle that has great traction, but yet on the opposite side, it has no traction. Right. And then we have the same situation on the rear wheel. All my power goes to the wheel with the least amount of traction. And that's why we sit in that feature and spin our wheels. All right, so what you're telling me is once we put in the lockers that this should be a cakewalk. That's right. You're going to get power to the wheels that have traction, and it's going to roll right on through there without any resistance at all. All right, so we're cheating to get out, and I'll tell you something, we're barely getting out right now. <laughs> so we've gone 0 for 2 so far. One last shot here. Now, this is a 60% incline. A little bit different, though, because this one's dirt, but don't you think it's a bit ambitious for this thing? I think you'll, uh, you'll be surprised at what happens. <laughs> well, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to hope not to strike out with this Jeep. I don't feel good about this. I'll tell you, this feature looks a little bit daunting. It is. It's a challenge. I don't even like walking up it. <laughs> we're back here on the Eaton Proving Grounds, and we're testing our four-wheel drive Jeep. So far, we've learned we've struck out in the first two obstacles, and this one looks, well, I, I'm not going to kid you. I don't think we're going to make it. Just be flat honest at this point. No, it's going to give the vehicle a workout, that's for sure. Now, the whole idea is to show you guys, really, the limitations of four-wheel drive, and we're starting to see them. So, you know, one last shot, and then we can go ahead and do the right thing. We'll upgrade this thing with the E-Locker, the Detroit Locker, and it'll be a whole new animal. That's exactly right. All right, I know when I've been beaten, and I've been beaten here today. No, that was all she had, I'm afraid. I say we take this thing into the shop and go ahead and upgrade these differentials. So we made our way inside the garage. We've got the Jeep up on the lift. And we can start now addressing our traction problem. It all goes down to our open differential inside this Jeep. And it's you know pretty much standard for what you see in the four-wheel drive community these days. The whole issue is, in fact, the, the open differential. And even though we've got power being delivered to the front axle and the rear axle simultaneously, if I have poor traction on one wheel on either of those axles, as we saw, all my power is going to go right to that wheel, the one that can't do any work for us. And we'll give you a little example here of what you see. And the reason why you have an open differential is so your vehicle can make turns because, well, your outside wheel has to go at a rate faster to make those turns. And that's exactly what we're kind of simulating right here. And the open differential allows you to do that. And today, what we saw was basically this, where we've got one spinning, in, one spinning on the row and the other one just sitting there as we slid down that 20% grade. Well, we do have a fix for that, and that's going to come in the form of the Detroit Locker. So before we get that in, I think we'll take it on the tabletop and give you guys a little bit of a, a better look inside of the guts of how this thing works. So the way we're going to fix our traction problems is going ahead and installing this Eaton Detroit Locker. Now this is a Dana 44 size and the actual unit that's going to go in our Jeep. But before we do that, I figured it'd be a good opportunity for us to kind of give you a play-by-play -play as to how this thing is actually works. It's really a best of both worlds scenario. The Detroit Locker is what we call a traction modifying differential, which means it does something a little bit special. In this case, it's locked most of the time. In other words, it's going to deliver maximum traction regardless of what's going on under either tire. It's going to uh, get that power to the ground no matter whether you're on mud or snow or ice, uneven terrain. And the nice thing is, is that when you're driving down the street and don't need any special uh, traction assistance, if you will, it's going to let the vehicle drive in a normal fashion. And the way it does that is by allowing one wheel to disconnect or decouple from the drive line whenever you go into a turn. So that's essentially what's happening here. It's, it's uncoupling and allows us to make the turn. Exactly right. Eaton's very proud of the investment we've made over the years, both in making sure we have the expertise in personnel that we need, as well as the investment we've made in test equipment to ensure that every part that goes into every product is the best we can possibly make. And what's really cool about that is the fact that right here on the proving grounds is some of that testing equipment. Why don't we go check some of that out? Sounds good to me. 
So you talk about testing and proving your product, Eaton is in a position to really excel above the competition. I mean, you've got, what, a dozen or so different test cells here where you test your product around the clock, and I'll tell you, each one of these cells doesn't look cheap. I imagine there's probably a million dollars worth of hardware and software and algorithms going on to, to test these products. What's going on here today? Well, this particular bench is what we call an engagement durability test. And this is a device that uh, takes the entire axle assembly and, of course, our differential inside of it and subjects it to very high loads. In this case, what is typically about 80% of the maximum torque capacity that that axle is able to handle. And what we're going to do is engage and disengage, for example, an e-locker or a Detroit locker over and over, typically a total of 20,000 times, which is obviously far more than that product's ever going to see in the vehicle in the field. And, and that's what we really consider to be one of the, the real competitive advantages in our aftermarket products is they're getting that multi-million dollar investment that Eaton has made. And so you know that unit that you're going to put in your, uh, your truck is going to work just as well. Well, there's a lot of cool stuff to see in all these different testing cells. The problem is we're running out of time and we still got to get that Eat Locker in. So what we're going to do is take a break, we'll put the Eat Locker in, and then we get to do some real world testing. And that's going to be fun. That's always a good time. Hey, welcome back to Truck U. We're here at the Eaton Proving Grounds in one of the service bays where our first step to gaining traction here today is to upgrade that open differential to a Detroit locker. So the first thing you want to look for when you take off the, the back cover and before you pull out the existing differential is check the oil. You know, you can all you want to do is look at the oil itself, see if there's any contaminants. You know, any metal shavings, anything like that are going to be signs of problems. You're going to want to look a little further, but this seems to be pretty good, so we're in good shape right here. One of the other things that you're going to want to do is check your lash before you remove that, uh, that stock differential. And you do that using a magnetic based dial indicator. Ideally, you're shooting for a range of about seven to eight thousandths. And then once you do take out the, uh, the differential, you're going to want to pay attention to which side your shims were on because you're going to want to put those shims back in and hopefully get right back to that same lash. Now in our case, it's a big advantage in the fact that we're keeping the same drive pinion and ring gear because that's going to mean that odds are we will get very close to that desired lash value without a lot of adjustment. Now the rear differential is done and we put the Detroit locker in back. Now up front we decide to use Eaton's E-Locker and while they both give you a locking differential, they operate completely different. Now we showed you how the Detroit is locked all the time and it frees up to make it streetable, but how does the E-Locker work? It's, it's pretty different, isn't it? That's right. The E-Locker, when it's de-energized, is an ordinary open differential. That's what makes it so suitable for use in the front axle. Let's that vehicle still maneuver around the corners just like normal. But the beauty is, via the switch on the dash, hit that switch, voltage comes down to a component we call the coil. That coil becomes a powerful electromagnet. The magnetic field then attracts the part that's adjacent to it called the ramp plate. That ramp plate then actuates a series of push rods that go down through the walls of the differential case. And as those push rods move back and forth, like you see right here, it moves that collar back and forth. When the collar's in the actuated position, it locks the side gear that's underneath it to the differential case, and it gives you a fully locked axle. Right, like this. And then you take the voltage away, and it, like this that. spring kicks it back out, and you're free up again. So that's you can right. make the turns and make it drivable and you know, useful around town. That's right. And all of that happens instantly. You can engage it uh, up to approximately five miles an hour rolling speed, so you don't have to come to a complete stop. And that's convenient, because sometimes you want to keep moving to get through that obstacle. What I like about the e-locker is the fact there's no problematic airlines to deal with, and simply a 12-volt connection actuates all everything. It's pretty yeah. simple. We've always figured if you're the kind of guy you can put in a differential, odds are you can handle running a couple of wires up to the battery. Well, you grab the wires, I'm going to grab the locker, let's put this thing in. Sounds good. All right, so here's our e-locker ready to go in place up front. Now we've got our ring gear on and we pressed our bearings into place. This will pretty much go into place similar like the Detroit one, other than we had to drill a little bit of a hole here for this wiring harness. That's right, that's the only real extra step. And we recommend you put that hole right in the top of your axle housing. And uh, after you get the differential in, there's even a small little rubber grommet that comes with the kit that'll seal that hole right up keep moisture out of that axle, which of course is important. E-Locker comes as a complete kit. Everything you need, including the wiring harness, switches, relays, everything you need. 
Now we decided to go with, you know, with lockers front and back on this vehicle because we want to get the ultimate traction in the off-road because we're going to be doing a lot of off-roading. But Eaton offers a full line of differentials for various applications that are actually pretty good no matter what you're using. We've got a, a complete portfolio that's going to have a solution for pretty much anything that you want to do. Well, one of our popular products is called a Detroit True Track, and that's a helical gear limited slip, which is a very heavy duty traction enhancing differential, and it's especially well suited for vehicles that are used in both an on and off road situation, uh, commonly, for example, construction vehicles or uh, farming and ranching. Now, the unit that I'm probably most familiar with is your Posi, because for me, it pretty much hits home. It's pretty much suited for the racetrack. That's right. Uh, I'm willing to bet a lot of our viewers have probably heard that term, Posi Traction. And in fact, our Posi is named after that, uh, that term. Eaton Corporation developed the original Posi Traction differentials back in the 1960s for, as you say, per uh, performance cars. And that's the differential that's going to get you hooked up, as they say, and get you off the line and give you that kind of uh, acceleration and performance that you're looking for. For us, this thing's more about getting the traction to the ground and uneven surfaces and taking on those obstacles which we failed miserably at this morning. So it's a good time for us to take a break. When we come back, it's back out on the trails for us because I know we can do better than we did this morning. I am confident. Welcome back to Truck U. Right now, it is all about redemption. We failed miserably yesterday. We kind of flailed around back and forth in there. But since then, well, we've got in a few little extra bells and whistles. We got the Detroit locker in back. We got the Eaton locker up front. And now we're about to take on that 20% grade once again. Now, Mother Nature hasn't done us any favors here today. It's cold, it's windy, got a little bit of snow on the ground, which is gonna make this ramp a little bit slicker. Also, you got the rollers to play with. But I'm so confident what we got now in this Jeep, I say we just do it in two wheel drive and forget the e-locker, I think the Detroit will carry us. That's exactly right, Bruno. Now we're actually dealing with true two wheel drive because that locker is gonna deliver power evenly to both wheels, which we know now with the open differential really isn't the case. Open diff really, in a sense, is only one wheel drive when you have poor traction under one of those wheels. True two wheel drive, thanks to the Detroit locker, this obstacle's going down. <laughs> Like that was way too easy. Very anticlimactic. Exactly. <laughs> it and wasn't even a challenge. No, exactly. And, and that's the beauty of putting in something like a Detroit locker. The, the result is immediate. The owner can't help but notice the incredible uh, performance improvement on their vehicle. All right, so let's be honest. The first obstacle, not even a challenge anymore with the Detroit locker in back. That's what we were hoping for. Now it's time to up the ante a little bit. Now we're back at the twist ditch, and as you remember, we failed miserably yesterday. We kind of flailed around back and forth in there, rocking back and forth. I thought we were going to lose the Jeep, to be quite honest with you. But now we're going to step it up a notch to keep up with the pace and go from two-wheel drive to three-wheel drive. What do you think? Three-wheel drive, which means we're going to have our four-wheel drive engaged, but since we're going to use the uh, leave the e-locker turned off, we're back to one wheel working for us like we saw yesterday because remember the e-locker is an open differential when it's deactivated. Three wheel drive, baby. Twist stitch, doesn't stand a chance. Hang on. You know what, that was awesome. We just walked right through that yeah, bad yeah. boy. I mean, could it be any easier? Two for two, baby. That's the way we want it. So we are down to our last most difficult challenge of the day. Now, I'm feeling pretty good because we're two for two after we put in the lockers. We've only gone three wheel drive. We haven't thrown in four, but I'm not an idiot. We need to need four wheel drive to make it up this thing with all that snow on the ground. That's right. This grade's tough enough as it is, but uh, add that little mother nature factor and it's going to be a challenge. Time to flip the switch and throw on the e-locker. Let's do it. All right. And that is how we do it on Truck U. Three for three, baby. That was fun. Yeah, hey, nice driving, Bruno. That, hey. was, that was a good time. With the Detroit locker in the back and the e-locker up front, this thing is now true four-wheel drive and ready to take on any obstacle we can throw at it. We've got to get this thing back, but not before we hit a few more obstacles along the way.
Today in the lab, we want to spend a little time talking about diesel trucks, more specifically the advantages of running Z-Max in those diesel trucks. Yeah, diesel trucks have their own set of challenges, one of them being extremely high cylinder pressures, about four times that of a gasoline engine. Well, the re end result of that is you have a lot of damage to and a lot of wear to your engine bearings, but adding Z-Max to your bearings can actually really extend the life of them. Let's take a look at the bearings. Now, this first one's brand new. It's got the lead flashing on it. That's what it looks like when you put it in, right? Now, these other two have been used in the same amount of time. Now this one was treated with Z-Max and this one was not. And you can see how much more wear and tear is on this one. So you look at all that wear in there and like you were saying, Bruno, that's just going to give you some more issues down the road. Yeah, once that protective barrier goes away, the bearings start to go quick, clearances go away, and you start having oiling issues. Now let's talk about the big rig guys, right? The over-the-road drivers that drive all the way across the country. Z-Max is going to give you increased fuel economy. Now what that means at the end of the year is a lot of money saved. And we're we're talking about guys that are driving a million miles plus on these rigs, right? So you definitely want to help extend the engine life as long as you possibly can, and that's what the Z-Max is all about. For more information about anything you've seen on today's show, check out speed.com or visit our website at truckutv.com. At one point in time or another, we've all either owned a truck or seen one with a big crack in the dash. It looks like the San Andreas fault. It's ugly, and you need to fix that problem. Fortunately, the guys at LMC Truck have an easy dash solution. Now, if you've got a 98 to an 02 Ram truck, this is the permanent fix for you. It's strong, it's durable, it'll go right into place, and it's an easy fix for that unsightly dash. Now it comes textured and color matched to your vehicle, so it'll pop in and you will look like you've got a new vehicle, at least from the outside in. You get these free catalogs from LMC Truck. They've got all the pieces and parts, all the diagrams, the part numbers. You can order it from the 1-800 number or the website. They ship it right to your door. It doesn't get any easier. We've been working with LMC Truck for a long time. That being said, it looked like you had a good time up there, but it looked a little chilly for this kid. I had an awesome time. The weather, you know, had no bearing on what went down up there. Right. It's a little too cold for you, so sure. you stay here. I'll go up there and take on that course. I think they might build one down south. I'll go check that one out. Or maybe in the summer. Yeah, there is a mud pit for you. I'm in. Yeah.